I think that uh, we all know that I kind of finished the season. I finished this job against a team of work. Um, Joe, before his injury, was neck and neck. And so this is going to be, we're trying to do the best we can to make sure that people have opportunity to compete. And I'm going to throw Tate Martell's name in there as well, too. But, uh, he's earned the right to compete as well. So uh, we're going to do the best job we can to make sure we can play the quarterback. I tell you, it's really going to be the starting quarterback at Ohio State. And just make sure we're doing it right. It's interesting because I'm sure you want a guy to emerge as the guy, but if it's really close, that battle could be pushed into fall, so that could end up being a good thing too. Could... Yeah, we'll discuss that as we go. I just day to day with those guys. Uh, far left, Mitch. Urban, what was it like going out there and not seeing JT Bear? I saw him. <laughs> he was off to the side, so I to say. Uh, Miss him dearly, but uh, life moves on, and he's not the first player. It won't be the last. That's a, you know, he's very unique, though, and, uh, especially the position he plays and how close we were, how much time we spent together. Uh, but I see Jalen Holmes, Tyquan Lewis, and I, I don't know if you notice, we always try to make sure. It's called good standing, it's something we have around here that when you leave this place better than when you came in, you know, that's something else to our coaches, make sure you leave the place better than when you, you know, go somewhere, whether it be your position group or and I just, you know, see Josh Perry gets treated like he owns his place because he does. And Jalen Holmes, Taekwon, you know, who else has the Denzel Award. You know, just see good, good people that have really uh, built this program. JT's obviously on it. I, I, without, without getting too deep, I mean, we've had conversations with his family. But we try to be as transparent with you guys as possible without getting too deep, most deep in our meetings. But uh, the answer to the question is probably yes. You know, my first obligation is Ohio State. But not far below that is the player in the family. And so, yeah. And does, does that expedite the process maybe more than you would like to have it? Because, because Sure, I'd love to have them both in the fall and let them keep battling it out. I'd like that. You know, we've had that before here, and I just think that it keeps people on pins and needles. And performance, it's, it's science that performance is better when you have someone. The uncomfort of uh, discomfort of competition at times, that's where you're on point, you're on point. You're yours by yourself. Sometimes you have a tendency to complacent. So, you know, that's something that's, you're going to watch very closely. And then the last thing real quick, just what is Matthew Baldwin's status? Is he able to oh, he's not going to play as an ACL. He had it. He had surgery. So he's doing a good job. He's gained a bunch of weight back. And he's here and he's out there today. Uh, but they're uh, very, very cautious with yeah. him. Second row left, Ari. Right now, you guys are three scholarships over, I think, or two scholarships over the limits. Do you have any roster changes or any players that aren't going to be returning or anything that is going to get you guys under 285? You kind of caught me off guard right now. I don't know if, uh, anybody that's the medical or something like that. Not that it hasn't been out there at this point. OK. Uh, I know that you're going to get here and be asked bunch of questions about four rounds, but is there a perfect plan in place? Is there like a way that you would like to see it play out in terms of timing and how it's going to happen? Would you like to go into the into the summer with a guy? Because um, I know that usually you say in the fall you're trying to get ready for a game. Is it better at the quarterback position to have a guy in the summer? That's the perfect scenario. I'd say yes, but we don't live in those kind of scenarios usually. So and I told you I'd much I've had it several times where you have been tough with two guys going after each other for that spot. Or going after the backup spot and just low competition. So, you know, who's our tailback over there? You know, you ask Mike Weber, he thinks he is. JK thinks he is. And, uh, to me, that's the coach's dream to have two people in that corner that are swinging at you know, Antonio to have uh, a change of demeanor, too. You know, Antonio walks around like he, he wants to be, he just wants to be the tailback. That's the perfect scenario to be a safer coach. I wish I had two guys that were leaving space and on the quarterback. And, uh, but I don't want to, you know, we're best practice when we're still coming back. Uh, front row right, Tim? Yeah, Urban, uh, just to clarify for people, when you look for a starting quarterback, what is what is it will make one guy better than the other in your mind? Well, I, I think in recruiting and then also just, uh, you've heard this before, but like Stella, I talked about this stuff because it's true. And uh, uh, competitiveness is number one, toughness is number two, leadership is number three, intelligence is number four. And yeah, those are the things that then extend, at that position, then you start breaking off into positions, like uh, extend the play, the ability to make something out of nothing. So that's how we.
determine who we recruit, that's how we determine who's going to start. I was going to say, and do you put, try to put those guys in those kind of like positions throughout the spring? Is that, you know, yeah, that throughout those, the winter and yeah. spring. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing it since January. Uh, I don't know if you. And we keep score. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, I know you're paying attention to this. Uh, one of your, one of the ballywicks of this team in the last several years has been trying to pin guys into the corner on kickoffs. Y'all you know, been very successful at that for the most part. Uh, there's a move down the NCAA. Yeah, yeah. Well, we remember one. There, uh, there's a move down the NCAA to do away with that. If you fair catch inside the 25 yard line, the ball will be set at the 25. Just what's your take on that kind of move? I haven't given enough thought. I have. It's a tough. It's a tough play. Probably the toughest play in sport. Football. Um, I haven't given enough thought because I think that just came out. So yeah. I, just told, I haven't really thought about it. I'll, I'll have an opinion at some point. I know Coach and I've already talked to briefly about it. But, you know, kickoff, if you, you know, the history lesson out here, kickoff has been dynamic. I know we've had a couple of bad ones, but uh, when you're still talking about the accumulation of yardage gain, like pinning the team down on the 10-yard line, it's been, we did a five-year, six-year study of it, it's been the one positive. So that's a weapon that we're taking away from us. So, Right now, but would you be for it or against? I mean, would you have? I mean, I don't know you weren't even asked about it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. Brent, all right, Austin. Herman, you talked about how much you love competition. You wanted to continue at a spot that's as critical as quarterback. For you as a coach, do you enjoy watching that race? Is it stressful? You've been through this a lot of times before. What is it like for you to manage that? I think I'm more stressed about center. I think when you have quality players going at it, it's, there's no stress at all. That's part of it. When you're worried about who's going to be your center, uh, that's my focus. I think we'll be fine at quarterback. Who's it going to be, I don't know. But I know they work really hard, and I see not two, but three guys that think they should be the quarterback. So I spend more time in the positions that I don't know who's going to be our center. And we have some uh, people that are going to go after it. But there's not a lot, you know, Brady Taylor, you know, Josh Myers, and Matt Burrell. I just talked to Josh Allen. Why, you know, Josh Allen, look at the kid walking around here. It's, Great looking player. You know, take it that's my so but there's zero stress, minimal stress when you have great players that are competing. It's a lot of stress when centers are very good as a point as a quarterback. That's just a, I don't know if the great players are good. Is that true across the rest of the offensive line that the spring might be more important for that unit than the quarterbacks? Because Isaiah's moving. The position and the position is the apex and that's what he's doing. There's a lot of pressure. Front row left, Doug. Urban, I know when you're out there, you're not differentiating guys by what recruiting class they were. But in 2014, when you won the national title, you had a lot, a lot of really good second year players that really could emerge. This 2017 recruiting class was so highly rated, but when you think about Brown and you know, Kuda and Chase Young, Brendan White's out there, and Myers and Davis, and we all know what JK did, but there's even, I don't know, Jalen Harris. And, Pascal Garrett, there's just a lot of guys that are out there now that look like maybe they're ready to do something this year. Do you do you think there are going to be a lot of guys that are second year guys who are ready to do something? I do. I think uh, you know, the names you just mentioned, I'll go back through them. I do. I, plus, they're A1A people. You know, I made a big deal about that 15 class because we had some non A1A people. Uh, a lot of them changed changing just positive. You know, some are out of here. That's a negative. Uh, 2000, uh, last year, was that 17 you said? 17, yeah, they, every kid you just, every young man you just mentioned too, they're, they're performing very well in all the areas of our program, so that's usually an indication that something's going on. And we know Jamari McCall last year just sort of had whatever was nagging in, and you have two really good tailbacks, you mentioned Tony, have three, you have a lot of veteran guys at H, where is Demario right now? How do you think he fits into all of this offense? Well, we challenged him because he's a he had a very good day by the way today. Uh, he pulled in a little tight hamstring where we had, so uh, but he had a very good day. Uh, I want him to be our returner, kick and punt returner. Uh, he's already been given, not given. He's that's his spot, and he's training as if that's a position. So he's watching videotape. He's training. He's doing it no different than he's a starting corner or starting receiver. Uh, he's been a full-time age, just to be able to move him around. It'll be more of the Curtis Samuel H, and, and it's on him. You know, we, the job description is very clear. And when you start to get it, uh, the first two years, it's kind of on us. 
once you start getting to be in year three, that's on you. And you either need to reform or it's your lack of reform. And it's on him. And right. the good thing is, he's responding pretty well. Sure. Front row right, Bill? Yeah, um, what is the status of Dr. Booker? Dante Booker had this, oh, yeah, there was some kind of an article or something where, yeah, sources. Now, let me say this quickly about sources. If there's a source that you're tuned to, you just realize it's an immediate termination from our program. So when you work hard to get sources, we ask you not to talk to our players. And I understand everybody's got jobs to do. I do too. It's instant termination if I hear that's going on. And that's going to be real. When I first got here, it was ridiculous what was going on. I'd have a team meeting and two minutes later, it'd be out of the battle. And so I'm watching that very closely. And I just, when I hear things like that, the mom, mom calls me during her tears and saying, well, where's that coming from? And I'm like, first of all, what's, what's what coming from her? And then someone gave it to me and I said, where was this? So I, I met with that day. I asked the mom, or once she called me, and there's, he plans on being a Buckeye. He's in a very difficult situation. He's gone through two shoulder surgeries. He just finished his second one. One was a uh, rotator, which is a very hard surgery. The other one was a labrum surgery. He just had it but a week ago, Jerry. Maybe a week ago. Um, a little bit longer. Yeah, just had it. And so he's, he's in a fight now. He, he does graduate. Uh, his plan is to, you know, if his plan is anything other than focus on rehab, then. And his plan is to be like he told me, be Ohio State Buckeye. I'd rather people leave him alone than let him go be an Ohio State Buckeye and work as hard as he can. Yes, he was a starter last year, then Except what's happening? Uh, what, I mean, if he's healthy, where does he fit? Uh, hopefully he's a starting linebacker at Ohio State. Yeah. And as far as the defensive line goes, I was just going to be like, we have him there, he's still gone. What do you think of what's happening with his going to be this year? The D-line? Yeah. I think exceptional. You know, we lost, uh, you see him walking around out there, Taekwon and Jalen. Obviously, Hope's not back yet, but those three guys. Uh, but you got some elite players behind him. Cooper looks fantastic. You got uh, Chase Young, and you got, uh, uh, obviously, the Bosa guy. He's pretty good. And then you got Larry did a great job of keeping inside guys. So, I, said, I, I think the standard for the set, we just can't drop below that. Got time for a couple more far left, Matt? Uh, you mentioned center and offensive line, but are there position battles, you know, obviously quarterback, but for you that you're really looking at this spring that we have to get this figured out by, by? Receiver, we've been good. We have not been elite. And I've challenged our coach. I've challenged uh, Ryan Day, who's going to be working correctly with him as well. Uh, I think we've been really good. We were elite 14. You know, we, were, we were elite. You know, we look at much more than just catches. We've been good. You know, last year, a very good, very good group. Maybe not the first rounder that was making the ridiculous catches all the time, but we look at the blocking, we look at more than just that. And so that's the position I want to see those guys develop into being. There's some elite people that are potential in that group. Uh, the, the positions you mentioned, center and, and the field safety is a concern right now. You lost Damon Webb, a great year for us. Jordan Fuller looks, uh, I know you guys were out there watching him really. That first half of practice, he looked fantastic. And he's starting to move around better and, you know, from his injury. But the field safety position is a concern. Um, also, how are the, the newcomers to the program? How do they assimilate their conditioning when you pull They're good. I think I put them in category of like the 2017 group. I always go just to, are they good people? Do they behave? Do they, am I having constant conversation with the parents about act like a fool? No. They're, they're great kids that do things the right way and get good grades, seem to be. I know that's coming up here pretty soon. But the correlation between that and performing well on the field is very high. And so far, it looks like a good group. And final question is third row left, Dan. Uh, Isaiah Prince looks like you've got a left tackle today. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like he's your guy there, or is that still a competition? I do. Uh, there, there's always competition, but he's earned that right to at least get that first shot at it. The other guy that had an excellent offseason, he's penciled in a right tackle, was there longer. He, we had our champions uh, dinner yesterday, and Coach Mick, he, he gave a lot of awards to uh, Bear Munford, which is a great story. Very talented guy, but that's kind of the way it started today. And then uh, Jay Sean Cornell looked like he was a defensive end. Is, is that a full-time move for him? Larry's still evaluating that, but we gave him a shot to go to that. That's originally what he was brought here as. Everybody, can we check into a couple of injuries just real quick? Yep. That's on the side. Like Michael Jordan, K.J. Hill, Jeffrey Okuda, I think all up on the side. Are they Shoulders. The 
okay sometime in spring? Are they out for the spring? Michael Jordan, no. Joe Pacula, no. Dante Booker, no. And KJ Hill, no. No. Oh, okay. no, no spring. And then uh, Brandon Dolan, a little bit slower than we thought. But he had a tough injury. I think it was Maryland over last year. So he had a broken leg. And he's, he'll be, these guys are all uh, going to play next fall. And Nick Conner is? Nick Conner, that, that was last year. Yeah. Someone asked me about that.